Hey everyone, welcome to No Ideas Media. I'm Nick Syke, and if you don't watch this whole video, at least watch the first minute because I'm gonna test how accurate your view of the world is with a few questions. Question one. Worldwide, 30-year-old men have spent 10 years in school on average. How many years have women of the same age spent in school? A, nine years, B, six years, or C, three years? Question two. How many of the world's one-year-old children today have been vaccinated against some diseases? A, 20%, B, 50%, or C, 80%? Question number three. How many people in the world have some access to electricity? A, 20%, B, 50%, or C, 80%? So what were your answers? Because the correct ones might shock you. Question one, A, worldwide women get nine years in school. Question two, C, over 80% of one-year-old children worldwide are vaccinated. Question three, C, 80% of people in the world have access to electricity. These questions illustrate the power of a book I recently read called Factfulness by Hans Rosling. You might recognize him from his outstanding TED Talks or from our series Learn GMO Episode 1. He was the guy who started the website Gapminder.org, which if you haven't visited, visit that. These bubble graphs are his doing. They show how much better the world has gotten over a very short period of time for basically every person alive. This guy is one of my all-time heroes because he's dedicated his life to giving us a more accurate view of the world as it is today. And that's something we all desperately need. See, a lot of us base our worldview on what we were taught in school quite some time ago. The world our teachers lived in is the world we think exists today. Most of us are working with really outdated information and add to that the rise in social media and the over-reporting of bad news, we tend towards a more negative picture of the world than is actually real. Slow incremental improvements over time don't really make for good news, but dramatic negative outliers, well, we hear about those all the time and it has a big effect. Factfulness opens with a series of 13 multiple choice questions, which is where I pulled those three samples from. The book then goes on to explain how and why those statistics are often much better than we'd assume. And don't feel bad for getting wrong answers on those. Hans Rosling traveled the world lecturing tens of thousands of people over his career and surveying them with these questions. And you know what? People practically always get those questions wrong. Worse, in fact, than if they were just trying to answer them randomly. That's how wrong our perception of the world is. We all do worse than random. We've all been duped into believing the world is getting worse all the time. This book will undo that for you, no problem. One of my favorite points that the book makes is about being an optimist. I've been calling myself a rational optimist for years, but maybe that's not the best term. Hans points out that the term optimism is loaded with a sense of naivety. The world is getting better, but it's not all sunshine and roses. We do have problems to solve and they are mounting and you can be the most optimistic person in the world. The problems are still huge, but overcoming them is possible. Possible. Maybe identifying as a possibleist rather than an optimist, as Hans does, is a good idea. I really like that nomenclature. It's certainly possible for us to solve our problems. So maybe I'm a possibleist. Some other gems of ideas from this book. Get over the idea of the developing world and the developed world because those two things don't exist anymore. Hans Rosling makes a brilliant case for thinking of the world in slightly different terms. He breaks it into levels, level one being the lowest on the economic totem pole and level four being the highest. As you might expect from those initial questions, if you tried to estimate how much of the world is at each given level, you'd probably get it wrong because things are way better than your brain gives them credit for. In other words, don't believe everything you think. And I could go on and on. Hans was also a key player in the Ebola crisis a few years back. He spoke to some of the leading institutions in the world and he was also a sword swallower. Yes, he talks about swallowing swords in the book. Odd but neat. This book was his last project. Hans passed away in 2017 from a fast acting cancer, but before he moved on, he left us all a gift, the knowledge in this book. When somebody as amazing as Hans Rosling gives you a present, you should open it. I cannot recommend this book enough. Buy it for yourself and when you've finished it, 
Pass it on to a person you know who needs a different outlook on life. Let's quit basing our perspective on the world on outdated information. Let's practice more factfulness. Thanks for watching.